In this video, I'm going to show you five tools to creatively control the color of your photographs in Lightroom. The first tool we're going to look at is something called split toning. So I've done some basic processing to this photograph of Lake Bled at sunrise in Slovenia, and I'm going to scroll down past Tone Curve and HSL to the area that says split toning. Here we have two options. We can adjust the highlights and the shadows. The highlights obviously being the lighter pixels in your scene, like over here, and the shadows being, well, the shadows like down here in this photograph. By adjusting the hue, we are adjusting the color that we are editing in this photograph. So I'll show you how this works. I'm going to change the hue to orange, and I'm gonna add some more saturation. Now it's only adjusting the saturation of orange in the highlights, not the shadows. As I add this saturation in, you'll see what happens. Now we've added more orange. Actually, it's closer to a yellow or a green at the moment. It's adding more orange, yellow, green into this photograph for a creative effect. Now, this is too far from my liking, but you can experiment with different colors. So let's scroll through some of the other colors. You can add some red or some pink into your scene, push it through to blue, purple and pink, and then over to, I guess it's more of an orange pink here as well. This is a way to creatively change the highlight colors in your photographs, and we can also work on the shadows at the same time. So I'm gonna find a color that I like here. I actually quite liked, I quite like the pink, but I'm gonna bring the saturation down. So we've got a nice pinkish hue on this scene here. I can show you that on and off. And now I'm gonna adjust the shadow color. We've got some green down here in the shadows, so I'm gonna adjust the hue and saturation of this part of the photograph. So I'll adjust the hue until we meet green, which is about there. And then I'm going to adjust the saturation. And you can see that the shadows start to glow quite green. And as I move across this scene with this saturation slider, look at this little box over here. This is getting more and more saturated. And I'll show you how this works. If I select this, you can see that we're right down here in the gray part of the green. But as I push it higher, the saturation slider is also moving, as you can tell that number's moving. And this is another way that you can select different colors. It's quite a fun way to experiment because you're adjusting both the hue and the saturation at the same time. So I'm gonna select, I think about there actually, that's quite a nice turquoise. And let's push the saturation a little bit more on the highlights. This is a creative effect, and as you see, I've gone to the extreme here. I wouldn't do this to most of my photographs, but there's one last thing I want to show you, and that's the balance. How much balance do you want to have between the highlights and the shadows when it comes to the split toning? I can push this all the way over to the highlights or all the way over to the shadows, and I actually think it looks better if we push it maybe 50 plus to the highlights versus the shadows, because you get more of this nice pinkish peachy hue in the sky and less of that kind of gross green in the shadows. In fact, I might not even add anything to the shadows at all, maybe just a little taste of that green. And there we have it, we have a creative way to process your photograph. You can adjust the color of your photographs using the color profile. So there's a tool on your camera that most photographers don't seem to know what to do with, and that is your color profile. That's the one where you can select neutral or portrait or landscape or monochrome. That's where you select the color profile of your images. This is largely overlooked and unused. When you import your photographs into Lightroom, you're left with a profile of Adobe color. There's also landscape and portrait, etc. but you're not actually using your camera's color profile, which is why you're not seeing the same colors in your scene. This section here will allow you to make changes to the color in your photographs that you just won't find the option to do anywhere else in Lightroom. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So it's right at the top here in the basic section, but this used to be all the way down at the bottom near calibration. So it's at the top here. And what you can do is you can click on these four squares and it's gonna show you the different color profiles that are available. So up here we have Adobe Raw and you can see, look at how the green in this scene changes when I go to Adobe Landscape and the yellow over here as well. It's a big difference, but I wanna go and see what it looks like if I use a camera matching. So it's taking those color profiles from my Canon 5D and it's using them in Adobe Lightroom. So instead of using the Adobe color, we're now using faithful, landscape, portrait, neutral, and standard. I think for this scene, landscape is definitely the winner. 
And don't forget there's more. There's more if you scroll down. So we've got different black and white ones, which are always fun to play with. And there's modern ones down here as well. And we actually skip past one, but there's also artistic ones. So it depends on what you want to look for in your scene. But this is one of the first changes you should make when you're editing your photographs. Do your basic tone adjustments as you saw I'd already done to this photograph. I think I'd done highlight shadows, um, whites and blacks and clarity, maybe a little bit of exposure and contrast. And if you're not using Adobe Raw or your camera matching, you can even adjust the amount of the artistic color profile that's applied to your photograph. So it might be artistic, black and white, modern, etc. Here you can adjust the amount. You can make it really strong or very minimal. It all depends on the look you're trying to go for for your photographs. So most people skip past this area because it's, it's pretty much hidden. It's totally collapsed when it's really the first thing you should be checking once you've done your initial adjustments. There's one color adjustment slider that I never touch in Adobe Lightroom, and that is the saturation slider. This is a real amateur approach to adjusting the color of your images, as you can see here on the screen. Instead, what I like to do is to use the HSL sliders. That stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Using these three sliders, you get much more control over the individual colors in your scene. So hue basically stands for what tone of color is in this scene. Do we want our yellows to be more orange or more green? You can adjust that with the hue slider. The saturation, where well, we all know what saturation is, is how strong is that color in the scene. So we can make the orange really strong, like in this horse here, or we can turn it to black and white, we can completely remove it. And the luminance is how light or dark that color is in your scene. Do we want the blue to be really light or really dark? And using these colors selectively, you're able to make adjustments to your images that you would not be able to do with just the saturation slider. So I'm gonna show you some creative ways to use these on this photograph. So down here in the foreground, we can see we have some grass. Now grass has a lot of green, and as a result, it has a lot of yellow in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the saturation for the yellow, and I'm gonna bring it all the way up. Now that looks pretty garish, very strong, but that shows me that I'm using the right slider. So what I can do now is I can just put it to where I like it to be, which is about there. And I know that in the sky, way in the background, there is some blue. And that's coming through these clouds, whether you can see it or not. So do I want that to be really bright white sky or do I want to bring it down and make it a little bit stronger? I think it looks better when you remove that blue almost entirely, you get a stronger sky. And when it comes to adjusting the hue slider, I'm going to show you one other tool that you'll see associated with each of these HSL sliders. And that's this picker over here. If I click on this, I'm able to bring it over to my photograph and I'll be able to adjust the color that I select. So here's the hair of the horse here. It's quite brown, quite orange. If I hold it down, now I can adjust this and it's going to adjust that exact color. So you can see there's loads of orange in it and a little bit of yellow. And I can do, I can make the horses red if I want. Uh, or I can just bring it down a little bit if I'd like. But I'm able to make selective color adjustments like so. This is a big difference between the way that a professional photographer will edit their photographs and an amateur photographer will edit their photographs. Most photographers, while editing their photographs, will check and adjust the white balance to make it accurate for the scene that they were capturing. But did you know that there is also a creative way to use this? It's basically exactly the same thing, but instead of trying to get an accurate color reproduction like we have in this scene, we use it creatively. So let's say I push it all the way to the right here. We're gonna to start to see a much warmer scene. Totally changes the mood and the color of the photograph. And if I push it to the left, we can see, well, that's really drastic, but it makes it a very cold scene. I would never go to these extremes, but slight adjustments allow you to change the mood, color, and feel of your photographs. So I'll leave it here in the center, and I think it looks a little bit better if I add some warmth to the scene like so. That's the temperature of the scene and I can also adjust the tint. Perhaps there's a little bit too much green in there so I'm going to go push it over towards the purple and now we have a creative change to the color of the photograph. One tool that can seem a little bit intimidating to photographers when they first get started is the tone curve. This allows us to adjust the tone and color in our photographs. So here as standard we're looking at the R G, B, red, green, blue channels all at once. And you can see over here on the left, just like a histogram, we've got a lot of shadows and then a big peak of highlights as well. And we can adjust the tone of our photographs, but really we're just adjusting the exposure here. 
So I'm going to double click to remove that point and then I'm going to change it to a color that I think is going to be more relevant. So let's go to green here and you can see the green is following basically the same shape. And I can see down here that we have a lot of shadows in the green. You can see this is in the trees and it's also appearing in this histogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one selection point in the middle and that's going to hold that middle point there. And then I'm going to take another one and I can either add in more green or I can remove some of the green to make it look more autumnal. This is a creative tool and this is where subtlety is really key. If you overdo this, it's going to become very obvious. And let me just reset this for you. I'm going to show you another tool that's associated with the tone curve and that's the color selection tool. Just like hue, saturation and luminance, you can select this tool, find a color in your photograph that you want to change. So for example, the, the green of this tree and then just move that up and down to either add more of that in or remove some of it. So I'm going to remove just a little bit of it, a very small amount, and you can see the difference already. That looks much more autumnal by taking out those greens that we associate with summer and leaving you just with the oranges, reds and yellows that we associate with autumn. Thanks for watching. That's five tools to creatively control color inside Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy this type of content, I'd ask you to please consider subscribing below as we're going to be publishing videos like this every Monday, plus more videos throughout the week. This is Josh Dunlop for expertphotography.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.